Good day, students. My name is Awoleye Oluwatoyi Esther, a biology teacher. The lesson title I'll be discussing with you today is Pollination in Plants. Pollination in Plants. At the end of this lesson, students will be able to 1. Explain the meaning of pollination. 2. Identify and describe the different types of pollination. 3. Differentiate between insect pollinated and wind pollinated flowers. And 4. Describe the importance of pollination to our food supply. Now let us enjoy the lesson together. Key vocabulary words. For the purpose of this lesson, look at the key vocabulary words. Take your pen and write them down. Note the spellings. I have nectar, N-E-C-T-A-R, scent, S-C-E-N-T, entomophilus, E-N-T-O-M-O-P-H-I-L-O-U-S, anemophilus, A-N-E-M-O-P-H-I-L-O-U-S, hunter, A-N-T-H-E-R Stigma A-C-I-G-M-A Bisexual B-I-S-E-X-U-A-L And Unisexual U-N-I-S-E-X-U-A-L No Z spellings Meaning of some terminologies. Bisexual flower. Bisexual flower is a flower that has both the carpels and stamens. Carpels is the female reproductive part. Stamen is the male reproductive part. Unisexual flower. It is a flower that has either the stamens or carpels. Anemophilus flower, that is another name for wind pollinated flower. Entomophilus flower, that is another name for insect pollinated flower. Hunter, that is the male reproductive part that contain pollen grains. Pollen grains is the male gamete of a flowering plant. Then we have stigma. Stigma is the female reproductive part that receives pollen grains during pollination. Resources. I have pictures for this discussion that we shall be sharing later. Content of this lesson. During this lesson, we shall be looking at Definition of pollination, types of pollination, features of self-pollinated flower, features of cross-pollinated flower, and agents of pollination. Our topic again, pollination in plants. Can anyone tell us the purpose of pollination? I'm listening. Good. By the end of this lesson, you'll be able to buttress the discussion more. Now, what is pollination? Definition of pollination. Pollination is the transfer of pollen grains from the anther to the stigma of flower. It is the first step which leads to coming together of male and female gametes and eventually fertilization look at the picture take note of the anther and the stigma we will go on short break now and we'll be back shortly but before we go on break look at the picture 
take note of the parts of the flower. Welcome back. Now we discuss types of pollination. There are two types of pollination, namely self-pollination, which is also known as autogamy. A-U-T-O-G-A-M-Y and cross-pollination, which is also known as halogamy. A-L-L-O-G-A-M-Y Then, what is the meaning of self-pollination? Self-pollination can be defined as the transfer of mature pollen grains from the anther of a flower to the stigma of the same flower or that of another flower on the same plant. The presence of bisexual flower is a must for self-pollination to take place. And self-pollination involves only one parent. Look at the picture for self-pollination. Now we go to cross-pollination. What is the meaning of cross-pollination? Cross-pollination is the transfer of mature pollen grains from the anther of a flower to the stigma of a flower of another plant of the same or closely related species. For cross-pollination to occur, two parents are required. Example, we have hibiscus, pride of Barbados, morning glory, and retubus flower. Look at the picture for cross-pollination. Now we go into student activity. Look at the picture. Take note of your observation. State type of pollination that you can see in the picture. Waiting for your response. Good. For A and B, it represents self-pollination. C represents cross pollination. Now we go to discussion on features of pollinated flowers. Devices which aid self-pollination are homogamy and cleistogamy. What is homogamy? Homogamy refers to the maturation or ripening of the anthers and the stigmas of a bisexual flower at the same time. We've defined bisexual flower at the beginning of this lesson. Bisexual flower is a flower that contains stamen and capels on the same flower. Now let's discuss cleistogamy. Cleistogamy is defined as a condition in which mature pollen grains are deposited on the stigma which becomes ripened at the same time. This situation usually occurs among closed flowers, that is, bisexual flowers which never open, e.g. we have wheat, barley, oats, and so on. Conditions which aid cross-pollination. Here we have dichogamy, unisexuality, and self-sterility. Now let us look at the agents of pollination. Flowers can be pollinated by one water. Look at the picture. Two, wind. Look at the picture of the flower. Three, animals, mostly insects, birds, bats, and man. Look at the picture. 
out of this agent, we have major agents or principal agents of pollination, which are wind and insects. Look at the picture of wind pollinated flower and insect pollinated flower. Note your observation. We will go on break now and we'll be back shortly. Welcome back. Before we went on short break, you were able to observe the pictures of insect pollinated and wind pollinated flowers. Now let us discuss this question together. Differentiate between insect pollinated and wind pollinated flowers. I'm waiting for your response. Good. On my side A, I have a table which I divided into three. On one part, I have flower part. On the second part, I have insect pollinated flower. And on the third part, I have wind pollinated flower. Now on the flower part, size of petals. Under insect pollinated flower, petals are large and conspicuous. Under wind pollinated flower, petals are small and inconspicuous. Under the flower part, color. Under insect pollinated flower, petals are brightly colored. Under wind pollinated flower, petals are dull colored. Under flower part, scent. Under insect pollinated flower, scent is present. Under wind pollinated flower, scent is absent. Under flower part, nectar. Under insect pollinated, nectar is present. Under wind pollinated, nectar is absent. Under flower part, pollen grains. Under insect pollinated flower, pollen grains are produced in small quantities, relatively large with rough and sticky surfaces. Under wind pollinated, pollen grains are produced in large quantities, small and light with smooth surfaces. Under flower part, stigmas. Under insect pollinated, stigmas are enclosed within flower. They are small and rigid with sticky surfaces. Under wind pollinated, stigmas hang outside the flower. They are flexible and long or feathery. And lastly, here I have stamens. Under insect pollinated, stamens are enclosed within flower. Hunters are small and firmly, firmly attached to the filaments. Under wind pollinated, stamens hang outside the flower. Hunters are large and attached at only their midpoints to the tips of the filament. Now, student activity. What is the significance of pollination to our food supply? Significance of pollination. Waiting for your response. Good. Now, le now let us look at this response here. Significance of pollination. It brings about the coming together of pollen grains and stigma for the process of fertilization. Two, it results in the production of seeds, which are necessary for many plants to produce. Three, it produces nuts, fruits, and beverages that are essential components of a healthy diet. And lastly, about 35% of food crop production worldwide depends 
on animal pollinators, including honey bees. Now, take home, that is your assignment. Compare and contrast self and cross pollination. Compare and contrast self and cross pollination. References here I have www.youtube.com, www.study.com, www.slideshare.net. You can visit this site and obtain more information. Now we have come to the end of the lesson. I believed you have gained something. Bye for now. Thanks.